Welcome back. This is the very last video of them all, or at least the very last one that I have planned. Uh, so what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be talking about how to make your ggplot graphs, which already probably look pretty nice, even nicer by giving them nice titles and labels and legend axes and that's everything like that. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and start with what we've already been working with. We're gonna have, you know, tidyverse. We've already got Haven, uh, crime, our crime data. And we're gonna start with a, with a graph that we already were working with last time, uh, which is this graph right here. It's a scatter plot of the log crime rate against the police per capita. And it's separated by uh, urban, by whether it's uh, by, by, so I have separate uh, colors here indicating whether the data is from an urban environment or a non-urban environment, okay? So the first thing that you'll notice is that we have some pretty uninformative uh, labels here. So we have an uninformative X label, it's called poll PC. What does that even mean? A log crimrit on the Y axis, we need to change that. So we're gonna add axis labels, okay? Uh, now this one's pretty simple. It's, it's pretty similar actually to the way that we did this for regular plot in base R, uh, where we're just gonna have X lab is the police per capita. We're gonna add that on. Uh, and our Y lab is the log of crime rate. There we go, we redo that. And you can see that we immediately fill in our X label and our Y label. We might also want a title on our graph uh, that we can get with the uh, GG title option. So we're gonna add a graph title, okay? So we're gonna take what we already got, let's just add on, go to the next line, GG title, and say uh, crime versus police per capita. There we have it, now we have a title for our graph. Now, the one thing that we have left to do is the legend. Now. Uh, in ggplot, the legend is one of the sticky things. It's, it's a little bit stubborn to work with, but it can be done. Uh, so the first thing you notice is that we just have zero and one there instead of it uh, telling us what those actually mean, okay? Uh, so uh, there are two different ways in which we can give it, get it to tell us the exact, what we actually mean in the legend there. So the first way that we can do it uh, is by actually labeling urban rather than uh, having it be zero and one, making it into a factor variable uh, with actual labels, okay? So let's create a new variable. Uh, so let's make sure our legend values correspond, okay? Uh, so let's make a new variable in crime using dplyr. Uh, we're gonna say mutate. We're gonna create this new variable uh, that's going to be uh, urban area. There we go. Uh, an urban area is going to be, use the if else command, which we haven't really used before, but it's pretty straightforward. We just plug something in. Uh, if it's false, we get one thing. If it's true, we get another. Uh, so we got urban equals one. If that's true, we're gonna say urban. If it's not true, we're gonna say not urban. Okay, run that. Uh, now, if we look at our crime data, We got not urban, and we got a couple urbans sprinkled in there. And I should have also made it a, a factor variable. Or is it already? It's not a factor, so we need to be a factor variable. As factor. It's the key here, we need to be a factor. Now let's check and make sure that it's a factor. There we go, now it's a factor. So now when we do this, when we can do this exact same thing again, uh, but this time instead of urban, we use urban.area, it's gonna use those factor labels instead of zero and one, it'll give us not urban and urban. Uh, it will use the variable name uh, for the title of the legend as well, so you might wanna pick a variable name that you know actually goes like you want it to there. Um, so that's one way in which we can get the, the legend label values to correspond. The other way that we can do it uh, is getting a little thornier, but I am going to show it to you, and it's a little harder anyway, but I'm going to show it to you because uh, it can be a little bit more flexible uh, when you start doing some crazier stuff. So this way that we, I just showed you works really well if you're using uh, color or shape or whatever to separate out your groups, but if you're doing overlaid stuff, it doesn't work quite as well. Um, so I'm just going to show you this way, and if you ever have to use it, you'll be like, oh god, I have to use it, I guess. 
uh, and you'll have to do a little bit more work, but you'll at least have to get started on how to do it. So the way we're going to do it is with the scale color manual. Okay, so we're basically setting the color values uh, by hand. Okay, um, and now if we were using shape, it'd be scale shape manual. If we're using line type, it'd be scale line type manual. If we're doing something manual. Anyway, so we have our values. Uh, and so we have two things that we're graphing here. We're graphing it not urban and urban, so C1 and 2, okay? And then labels, we're going to call those uh, not urban and urban area, okay? And I'm, I'm making it not just urban so you can see that it's not the exact same as what we already did. And remember here, we're using factor urban in this version, so I do have to label them. It's not pre-labeled for me. So if I go ahead and do this one, It'll do not urban and urban area. There we go. Uh, I could also use scale color manual to, to manually pick the colors that I want to do. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the basics of it. Uh, color, by the way, is an option that you can put in your geometries to you know customize them as you like. I haven't mentioned this, but again, there are a million different options. Color is just one of them. If you put color in your aesthetic, it groups your data. If you put color outside of your aesthetic, it will choose the color of the thing that you are doing. Anyway. All right, that's it. That is R for Economists. Uh, we're ending up here with ggplot2. Uh, I hope that you found these series of videos useful, uh, whether or not you watched all of them or just skipped around. Uh, but uh, that's it. Uh, let me know if you liked these videos uh, or if there's a particular thing that you want to see in R. Maybe, heck, maybe I'll make some more videos. Who knows? Just let me know. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, have a good one. Bye-bye.